they say that the nanoparticles can leach into your skin. So, I think I'll try and be a little on the safe side as to whether or not it's going to get into me. Now, the one problem I had with this camera, let's zoom in a little here. These are the captive gears that tell the camera how much to unwind. Because otherwise, if the spring doesn't stay within a certain range, then you really can't govern the speed of the camera. Now, this is running nice and smooth, but it was glitching before. This is what only allows you to wind the camera 21 and a half turns and then it stops. Alright, now the problem I was having was that this gear here, it had stopped hard so many times that this burr right there as you would try and drive this through its limit of motion, it would slam into this gear. So I had to take a diamond file and take an edge off of that. So look for that when you're you're dealing with them. And Bolex never showed any lubricant that I could see in the book, but I take that slipstream weapons lube and uh, I give it a a few dribbles down into the slot here along the way and down into the slot here. And then I take my trusty Q-tip and run it around a few times after it's settled down. Spread it around. Sounds pretty good. The other thing you have to look for is this spindle here. Not that. That one there. On that rides the gear that locks these fixed gears here. That gear, which is, where did I put it? Looks like this. That gear is the gear that actually, when the motor's sitting in place, the motor runs up against this gear, and that's what locks this train in together. And when you're setting the tension of the motor, you pull the circlip off of this and let this turn or the motor unwind as much as you want. And then lock the two together with that. And there's a circlip on top that holds it. So, but the thing you have to look out for is that from kids over cranking them, that's where this burr comes from. And that's where motor that broke in this also the kids sort of uh, overwound it and you can see they destroyed some of the teeth on the perimeter there and that unfortunately Bolex no longer makes these cans they respring them with a new spring but if the teeth are damaged they won't touch it and so right now I'm looking around on the net trying to find someone who can do starter teeth, starter gear ring teeth replacement, uh, maybe salvage some of these. I must have 40 of them sitting to the side of me here and everyone that can be replaced I've s sent back to Bolux to have rewound. Uh, I tried to find a shop here in town that would do it and they did a couple of them for me but the, it was not acceptable. It was worse than the ones Bolux was doing at the time which were pretty bad. So I guess we can put some of the really simple things on now. Um, we'll put an idler on that is for the feed belt. Spins around, goes on that spindle right there. We'll take our slipstream here uh, uh, and 
nice stiff little brush and put a little bit on that spindle top and bottom there's two pieces that spin on there give it a little drop of the soil I'm going to have to rig up a needle on this boiler because I just feel that much better with it. So we'll put that piece on there. Oh, a little bit of grease on top of that one. There's the mating gear that goes to that. Now this gear here, just like most others, I'll take a hand deburring tool and make sure there's no edges on the holes. Run a little deburring tool around it. Blow off any chips. Put a drop of oil on it. the screw and the little white screw pin there. Guess I may need my granny glasses for that. non-critical so I'll use this other oil on the plunger here for the motor disengage lever just something to keep it from being dry I'll show you how that works later okay. now we'll Put in the feet and take up spindles. I always mark them because I can never remember which way the fingers are supposed to go. This is the top unit. Had it nicely cleaned in the soup. And we'll go through the lubricating installation process. Even though it's been cleaned, I'll still take a rag with a little bit of alcohol and wipe them down. Make sure there's nothing still stuck to them. This is odd. I have to call Dieter. This one just looks odd. It appears there's, even after the ultrasonic, there's stuff there that didn't want to come out. So I never liked that Bolex grease. It just it didn't seem adequate to me. Take a little bit of grease. Drop it 
down there on the other side to help spread. Also, all these holes have been deburred. All the ones I could get at, I'll run the counter sink around. I'll put a drop of oil. Drop of oil on it. Put that down in there again slowly and spread that oil around. So we got that done. Now we'll flip it over. Put a little bit of grease on that. Drop the one washer on there. You can tell which way it goes because it'll almost have always have a wear pattern. That's that shiny bit that you can see near the, near the center. Okay, put a little more grease on that. Another mere drop of oil on this. Put it in from this side. See how it feels. Put a drop of grease on that plate. This is the spring washer that runs on there and holds that slightly in tension when it's running. Spread that around. I'll flip it over, hold the spindle in with my finger. Now we got the pulley that the belt's going to go on. We'll pack a little bit of grease in onto that spindle. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to say that, the thing with the Bolex is, it, is that once you lubricate it, there's not like a sewing machine where there's a series of holes that you can get at various spindles and keep them wet. The stuff you're putting in there has got to be good stuff because it's going to be in there until something fails. And then you have to dismantle the whole camera again. And... Uh, It's a true test of your lubricant's abilities to do its job. What's that? 